When I became a pilot, my uncle gave me my logbook. Know everything you know about the weather before you go on the flight. That's what he signed in my logbook. An airplane that broke in flight because they were in a thunderstorm. Even worse, they were about to get out of it and they decided to turn around. And eventually ended up killing everyone on board. So weather is the one thing that you always keep an eye on, especially as a private pilot. We've kind of talked about the weather, how the weather forms, the hazards that it creates. There's so much more to this, which is where we need to find out how to get the weather information. And that's what we call weather products. If you see an AirMed Tango along the route, what would you do? Coded snapshot of the weather at that time. So where can we find those? Aviationweather.gov. Everybody's favorite website. Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. 271105. What does that mean? I need to review this. And welcome back to another episode of FNG, The Flying New Guy, where we cover the aviation topics that you need to know to become a pilot. And of course, as always, we've got Jason with us, who is going to be talking about the big topic, which is the weather. Now, we started this last episode, we talked about weather theory, and this time we're going to be talking about weather services. So I highly recommend that you go maybe back to the weather episode if you haven't seen that one before you watch this one, kind of makes sense, but... Uh, originally, this was going to be all in one episode, but there's so much to discuss about this that uh, we decided to break it into two parts. So, Jason, are you ready? Ready. Let's do it. We've kind of talked about the weather, how the weather forms, the hazards that it creates, but uh, for pilots, there's so much more to this, which is where we need to find out how to get the weather information. And that's what we call weather products. And there's quite a few of them. Can you maybe name one of the obvious one? METAR. METAR, that's right. We're going to get started with the METAR. What's the METAR? It's a coded snapshot of the weather at that time. So actual weather. Yep, it's an observation. It's observation. Yeah. Okay. What do METARs tell us, like in detail? What are the things that are in there? Airport, we get the winds, and that's wind direction and intensity and gusts. Yep. We have temperature and dew point. We have ceiling. We have altimeter setting. We yep. have precipitation, if there's precipitation occurring. Visibility. Visibility. Visibility also. How often are they issued? Uh, once an hour, unless conditions change enough for them to be issued again, like a line of thunderstorms or something moves in. In which case, what, how would it be called? Uh, speci. 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 It's very special. Special. It's very special. So where can we find those? Aviationweather.gov. Aviationweather.gov, everybody's favorite website, mm -hmm. which was redone maybe six months ago now or something. Uh, we made a video. If you haven't watched that, I recommend that you go and watch it. Can I go over? I actually like the new design. I think it looks a lot better than it used to. It's so much easier to access. Easier stuff. to find information. Yep. Easier to find kind of a flow to find information. Mm -hmm. So aviationweather.gov, what's another place where we can find the weather? Everybody's favorite pilot app. For flight. For flight. That's right. For flight. In this video, we're not going to actually go into the details of how to read a METAR, but you have to learn how to decode all of these things. You have to know the terms, right? Snow is what? SN. SN. What's mist? BR. It's baby rain. It's baby rain. It's mist. Brume in French. Uh, smoke is also an interesting one. I don't know that I remember what smoke is is, but I think that if I saw it on the METAR that I would say, oh, that's smoke. 8HZ is haze and... FU. Uh, funnel cloud. No. And that was oh, being oh, nice, by the way. Smoke is FU. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like... <laughs> Anyways, yes, smoke for fumé, another French word. What's another weather report that's kind of always goes hand in hand with the METAR? TAF. The TAF. Okay, what's the TAF? It is a forecast. What does it stand for? Do you remember? Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. Terminal Aerodrome Forecast. Okay. So forecast in this case, how often is it issued? Every six hours, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's valid for either 24 or 36 hours. Up to 30. Up to 30. What does that cover? What kind of information do we get out of that? We get very similar information. It's prediction on visibility, precipitation, or other happenings, basically. Yeah. How far does the, uh, the METAR and the TAF go as far as distance from the airport? I think it's 10 nautical miles. Five, five statute miles. Five statute miles. <laughs> it's a little it's less detailed right, than, yeah. than the METAR, but it's, and the format is very much the same. The, yes. the big difference is what between the METAR and the TAF as far as the format? The METAR only gives you, I mean, it's observations, right? So it's it's one time. Yeah. The TAF has multiple lines, yeah. which has multiple times. Do you remember kind of the term of how it's divided? When they give you these blocks of hours, they can use different terms from, right? Yeah. FM. 
Right. Tempo. There's temporary between yes. this time and this time. Yeah. There's becoming. Becoming. Okay. So all these kind of have different meaning behind them. So in real life, when would you use one or the other or both? What's the application of, of these two things? If we were getting ready to go to the airport and fly today, I would look up the METAR now and say, what does it look like? Yeah. And I would probably look up the TAF as well if we were going to go like from here to Flagstaff. Yep. Check the TAF here, check the TAF in Flagstaff. Yep. Say, okay, you know, is there going to be something happening? What does the weather look like in Flagstaff now? It's like a weather briefing, which mm-hmm. I'm, I assume we'll probably talk about We'll in talk a bit, about that as well. Yep. But it, it's a quick way to determine, is this a good idea or not? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And then- when you're up in the air on the cross country, I always go to four flight and then I pull up the weather at that airport that's right there that mm-hmm. I can see outside just to see what it looks like. And then at the next airport and the next airport, for example, we're on a very long cross country and I don't have an altimeter setting from a controller that I'm talking to, but I see an airport right here. I'm going to go to my four flight, tap on it, and then right away I can see what the altimeter is setting and I can reset. So you don't have to wait for the, the controller to tell you mm-hmm. what to set your altimeter setting to. Pilots can also share the weather in some areas. What is that called? Pyrep. Pyrep. What's the difference with that? Most METARs are automated mm-hmm. systems. They're AWOS or ASOS systems that automatically issue your report. A Pyrep is like, hey, something weird is happening and other pilots should know about it. Over the years, the FA or NOAA, I should say, um, has changed kind of the way data is being displayed on their website with different types of products. One of them that we have now is called the Graphical Forecast for Aviation, GFA. So that's kind of the first thing that I usually go to when I, when I want to look at a general picture of the airport. It's going to give you the clouds, precipitation, the visibility, turbulence. So you can see all of that data right here and then click and get more detail. This is what we're going to find on uh, FA on aviationweather.gov. What about the good old winds aloft? What does that tell us? It tells us the wind speed and direction at different altitudes. Wind speed and direction. And what else? One more thing. Temperature? Yeah. Why is the temperature important at altitude? Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to know the temperature because we want to know how close we're going to potentially get to clouds. Temperature and dew point? Yeah. Spread. Yeah. And you're getting there. What if you get in the clouds? What do you want to know the temperature? Well, I don't what want to get What if you get close clouds. to a lot of humidity? What <laughs> if you get close to a lot of humidity and, and you want to know the temperature because? I think. See, right. But I'm, I'm not even. Yeah. Well, you're not thinking I'm about not it thinking because about it cause 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 you can't fly in the clouds. Fly through but still. Moisture, but it, yeah, that makes it, sense. You can, you can still be in trouble, especially with like if you fly an airplane with carburetor. Mm-hmm. Harbor icing is somewhat of a possibility, yep. even if you're not in visible moisture. So what's 9900 in the wind uh, aloft? What does that mean? I don't remember. Light and variable. And then do you remember how we code the winds over 100 knots? 1950s technologies, folks. <laughs> Let's say you look at the, at, the, at the winds aloft report and you see 271105. What does that mean? 271105. I need to review this. The wind is coming from the 270. From 270. Okay. At one, one knots. Yep. And zero five is the temperature. Okay. Okay. What if you get something that says 771105? So we added 50 yeah. to the first digit, the first to digit. the wind direction. Mm-hmm. That means that the wind is over 100 knots. So 77 means 77 minus 50, 270. Mm-hmm. One, one becomes 111 knots. And then the temperature. Now, the temperature would probably be negative in this case, but um, yeah. And then the temperatures over what altitude are always negative? 24,000 feet. The next thing is air met. What's an air met? It's an area of what, icing or turbulence? Okay. An air met is something that general aviation aircraft should be paying attention to. Okay. The air met is mostly designed for that, not something that airline pilots are going to worry about typically. Issued for conditions that affect at least 3,000 square miles, so fairly decent size. Mm -hmm. Updated every six hours, just like the the TAF. And then there's three different types. Sierra, which is, I always think about S as visibility. 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 (laughs) So, I mean, Zulu is freezing, so Sierra is visibility. So, IFR, mountain obstructions, obscuration, so things like that that you want to know about, right? Mm -hmm. So, anything that's widespread, IFR is going to be in there. 
And then mountain obstructions like fog, haze, and clouds. Again, something that you want to know, especially around here. Uh, Airmet Tango, Tango 4. Moderate turbulence. <laughs> if it's more than moderate, it's going to get a SIGMET, which we'll talk about in a minute. So sustained surface wind over 30 knots, and then low-level wind shear. And then Z for Zulu, for freezing and icing conditions. So moderate icing, anything above that is going to get a SIGMET. And then freezing level information. So, yeah. Airmet to review. Next is a SIGMET. What's SIGMET. a SIGMET? Significant. Significant weather. Yeah. Definitely want to pay attention. Yes. Typically for all pilots that are out there. Uh, there's no real minimum size for the area. This is like something that's important. And that's valid for four hours, but that's issued as necessary. Okay. And then, again, as far as the SIGMET, turbulence, severe turbulence, you want to know, severe icing, and then severe restrictions of visibility. So dust storm, sand storm, volcanic ashes, all these things you really want to know. That's going to limit to three statute mile visibility. And then convective segments, which is... Thunderstorm. Thunderstorms, anything convective, bacteria, you know, issued every hour, valid for two hours. And then those are for severe or greater turbulence. So we want to pay attention here. Icing, wind shear, that's the stuff that's going to kill you. Convective segment. You're not flying. You yep. you you stay on the ground. Sigmet, you're flying potentially, but you're avoiding the areas as much as possible. But mm -hmm. I would recommend not to be in there. But sometimes they're so wide. I mean, I I flew through. Uh, we had a Sigmet coming back from Colorado when I was I was flying by myself, I think, and I flew right at the edge of it because I could see where why there was one, and I could see the cells. And that's what was affected, and it was out of the way, but I was inside of the zone. So something to think about. Severe thunderstorms, you've had uh, hail three quarters of an inch or greater, and then uh, tornadoes, embedded thunderstorms, line of thunderstorms that are at least 60 miles long, and then thunderstorms covering at least 40% of a, a 3,000 square miles area. So, yep, not good. So speaking of all this, go, no go decision. We're doing our planning. What's the first thing you're going to check? You mentioned meet Har and Taf. Yep. And then what else? I mean, turbulence. Turbulence. Winds. Yep. Air med sigmet, convective sigmets. Yep. And then the GFA, quite frankly, the, the graphical area that's going to show you all this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you see an air med tango along the route, what would you do? Determine what altitude it's at. Yeah. And, and then what? And then make it, I mean, is it at my altitude? Maybe go around it. Go around to uh, a different altitude. Yep. Or or not fly depending on, you know, what is being reported. What if you see a convective segment? No, thanks. Agreed. All that information is on the FA website, right? Mm -hmm. On FA safety. So when I when I became a pilot, my uncle gave me my logbook and I just, we're moving right now, we're cleaning up our desk and I just found my logbook that was in there and he said, know everything you know about the weather before you go on the flight. That's what he signed in my logbook to tell you. He was an airline pilot. Mm -hmm. He flew for, for Northwest on 747s for probably 30 years. And so his, his takeaway from all of this was the weather will kill you. Pay attention to it before mm -hmm. you go. So in for flight, there is a way to do a pre-flight briefing. If you're in the course, in the private pilot course, we have a section about planning a cross country where I'm going to show you how to actually pull out the weather and, and, and find that information and then go on aviationweather.gov and get that data. Uh, when you're up in the air, we have the little unit in the back of the, the airplane, the Sentry, mm -hmm. that is going to provide you weather updates as well. So uh, I would say weather is the one thing that you always keep an eye on, especially as a private pilot, because that's the thing that, that's going to kill you if you don't pay attention. You're going to be stuck in the cloud. You're going to have to divert somewhere. We just did our flight uh, back, not me, but Tom was flying the airplane back from Sun and Fun and uh, made the decision to divert mid-flight, right? Mm -hmm. He was going this way and all of a sudden he went down, went to Tallahassee because there was a line of thunderstorm moving this way. He thought maybe he could clear it, realized that, nope, not going to even try it because it's not worth it. Went down on the ground. Waited a couple hours, line of thunderstorm went through, and then he took off again. So that's the right decision. That's like, we, we talked about decision making, right? The couple episodes ago, that's where you make the right decision. We have these uh, accident case studies that we've done. One of them recently of an airplane that broke in flight because mm -hmm. they were in a thunderstorm. And even worse, they were about to get out of it and they decided to turn around. 
and get back into the storm and then eventually ended up killing everyone on board. So the weather is not something that you mess with. You collect that data, you do your pre-flight. When I plan my cross-country, I plan them the night before. I go in for flight, I look at the data. I go in aviation weather, I look at the data. And then if it looks okay, in the morning, I do a short brief where I pull the update and I see what the update looks like. And then I make my decision from here. But never be afraid to, uh, to cancel the weather and do it. So uh, there's not much more that we can talk about uh, in this, but I, I really wanted to cover on these few things. Know you basic weather reports and then how to read them and you'll be fine so any additional questions on this i don't think so i mean at this rate you're halfway through being a weatherman yep except you're accurate <laughs> just kidding uh, i know you're good at the weather because i know you did a minor in this and, mm. and you enjoy the weather so you're an easier student than most most people don't like the weather um, it's, it's complicated, but learn as much as you can about it. You, we don't want you to be a meteorologist. That's not the goal. The goal is to understand what the weather is going to be doing in the future and then trying to predict what it's going to look like so you can make the right decision. So now if you have any weather questions or good weather stories to share, make sure you drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear them. And also, if you want to know more about the weather, uh, of course, we have our private pilot made easy course available. Thanks for watching. And then we'll see you in the next one.